guys, welcome back to the channel Daughter of Increase. My name is Nathan Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happened to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday and Thursday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. Today's video, as the title says above, is going to be probably a week-long vlogging video where I have you guys read with me. Um, you're going to follow along as I read through a biblical fiction, and I'm going to show you guys how I've been annotating and what things like that. Um, I did do a how I annotate in my biblical fiction video. You can click the on the screen for that. Um, but this is going to be a more kind of in-depth, personal, relaxed version of that where you guys will see me read through a complete book and completely how I annotate and mark up this book. So I mentioned this book already in the January Reads and Studies video. Yeah. Um, and the book I'm going to be reading is from Tessa Afshar. It is Harvest of Rubies. It is the first book in the duology. There are two books, Harvest of Rubies and Harvest of Gold. I hauled this book as well as a sequel in my December's book haul. And then I showed you guys this in the January Reads and Studies. I told you guys I wanted to read at least the first book. But um, yeah, this is a biblical fiction written by Tessa Afshar. This is one of her Old Testament um, stories. She has four of them. She has the two in this duology. And then she has two other ones, which I read and loved. Okay, read and loved. Love her. She's a phenomenal author. I love her. I'm going to do a full-blown video on her books after I read her other two New Testament books. Because she has seven books total. I have five. I've read three. I'm going to be reading this one and the other one, which will mean I have read five of her books, which then means I need to read the last two. If that just made any sense. But um, I'm going to quickly read the back of this and then walk you guys through the things that I'm going to use. Um, and it is January 1st. So I do want to say Happy New Year right now. It is 11-21. Let me close all of my emails and stuff. But um, it's 11-21 p.m. So it's super late. But um, I had a busy day. I spent New Year's Eve with my fiance and our son. We always spend that together. Um, I got home at like 5-ish. Then I cleaned my room because I left my room a hot mess. Um, and then I helped my son with some homework. Then my mom, me, my mom, and my sister went food shopping at Walmart. And then we got back and then we cleaned up and everything like that. So blah, 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 blah. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm like really tired. But um, I know it looks like I'm wearing the same outfit from the previous videos. I'm not. I have on a completely different outfit. But it's the same shirt, if that makes sense. Um, and you can tell because that video I had buns and I looked a little bit more alive. In this video, I'm looking a little bit tired. Um, so yeah. Anyways, I'm going to read the back of the book now. So, um, remarkable talent threatens to cloud a life. The prophet Nehemiah's cousin has catapulted into the center of the Persian court, working long hours, rubbing elbows with royalty, and becoming the queen's favorite scribe. Not bad for a woman living in a man's world. But a devastating past has left Sarah believing that God doesn't love her and her achievements are the measure of her worth, a measure she can never quite live up to. Darius P. I call him Darius P. because he has a weird last name. I think it's Pasagarde. There it is. I don't know. Darius Pasagarde? Pasagarde. I'm going to just say Pasagarde. Is accustomed to having his way. A wealthy and admired aristocrat. The last thing he expects is an arranged marriage to the queen's scribe, an intelligent woman who scorns him. Can two such different people help one another overcome the idols that bind them? I'm excited to dive into this one because it talks about the prophet Nehemiah. Yes. Um, and two, it looks like it's going to be a really sweet romance between a Christian, I'm saying Christian, but like a Jew and the Persians. And, you know, I'm excited to read this beautiful book. Um, pay me no mind, it's late, I'm tired, yeah. <laughs> but, um, so I have this, there are 27 chapters. My goal is to read five chapters a day, maybe even more. Um, so starting tomorrow, January 2nd, I want to read five chapters. And five chapters in this book is going to be up to page 71, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, 71. So I'm going to basically be reading this tomorrow. So you guys are going to see me read it, annotate it, mark it up. Um, and all of that. So to do that, I am going to show you guys my annotating pouch. So I keep this pouch with me anytime I'm reading a book. Currently, right now, I'm reading a uh, fantasy novel that I have to review. This is a massive book, mind you. I'm reading a fantasy novel. I am not that far. If you guys can, I'm, I'm really not that far. I'm only like 50 something pages into this 600 page book. But um, this is a, a review book that I have to review before February, before it comes out. So yeah, I'm working on that. Um, but I always keep this pouch because it has all of my tools for annotating. This pouch I got from Marshalls from my fiance. He bought me a gift, like a gift basket, and it came with this pouch, some pencils, a notebook, um, some notepad, candles, tea, and all that. So that's where this is from. So inside, it looks like this. Hope you guys can see that. I don't know. 
But um, so inside I have post-it notes. I only keep two in here. So I have these gorgeous ones here. And then this yellow one. And both are actual like post-it brand post-it notes. I have both of my annotating keys. I use different keys for the different books. So for my biblical fiction, here's the key that I use. You can take a screenshot of that if you want. And then for when I'm reading other like books that are not like biblical books or Christian books, like my fantasies, my paranormals, this is the key that I use. So I'll keep those in there because sometimes I do forget what colors are for what. Um, I keep a kind of bookmark or card in there so that I can make straight lines when I'm underlining because sometimes I'm just, I want to be, you know, on point. Um, I have my pen that I write my notes with. I have my Sharpie art pens that I highlight or underline with. And then inside of there I have this pouch. This is a little pouch that I got from Dollar Tree. Um, and I keep extra bookmarks in the front. Are these all the bookmarks yet? So I'm going to show you guys. So these are just the extra bookmarks. So I have Live a Life of Love. Um, this one is Let All That You Do Be Done in Love, 1 Corinthians 16 and 14. This gold one with the blue background and then this black and white that says anything is possible. So I just keep extra bookmarks. And then inside I have all of my little tabs that I use. I'm not going to take them out, but they fell out but yeah I use lots of tabbies to tab up my books that I read so um what I'm gonna do is put all this back quickly and I'm probably gonna use this anything as possible bookmark so I'm gonna keep that out to put in the book and I'm gonna run through with you guys the um colors that I use so again my pen I use a 0.7.5 millimeter pen just because it's small enough for me to write down all the notes and things that I want to write. And I use nine different colors. So these are not Sharpie pens. These are Sharpie art pens. This is a Sharpie pen. So Sharpie pens have like the black body with the silver in the writing. The art pens are like an all black tube with Sharpie pen and then the color on the bottom, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm going to run through the colors. So for red... I have red here, and I use red for anything that has to do with character names, character traits, um, character personalities, anything relating to the characters in the story. Um, mainly for like the main characters, but I do underline names for all the characters that are reoccurring. So I only underline their name once, not multiple times. Like, so if like the name is Sarah Bullocks, Sarah Bullocks, basically, I will underline her name that one time, and then know that she's a character within the story. Um, and if there's like any descriptions of what they look like, how their personality is, what they work, where they live, um, not where they live, but like where they work, not where they work, what they do, like their occupation or something like that. Um, character traits, personalities, things like that, underline the red. Hopefully that made sense. <laughs> um, next we have orange. Orange um, has anything to do with like plot points, key points. Um, I mark it orange and I use the page flag to match so orange page flags as well as orange pen for the same thing So orange again is for like plot point key points the next is pink and pink is for romance anything that's like a romance scene kissing um, whatever the case may be marriage pink pink is for romance like pink romance <laughs> um, same thing with the page flags um, yellow is a happy bright color so anything that makes me laugh anything that's funny and I always find funny scenes in books and mark it up in yellow so um, yellow is for that same thing with page flags next is blue is the opposite of anything that's funny so we're gonna go sad so anything that's sad um, any sad moments sad parts where a character is dealing with something um, or had like a harsh pass or something like that gets marked in blue with a blue page flag Green is for memorable quotes. So if I come across something that I think that I want to remember to like quote later on, marked in green with a green page flag. Purple is for scriptures. I mean, does that, that that's it, scriptures. Um, and I mean like if they actually write out the scripture or if they just quote the scripture or if something in the book reminds me of a scripture, it gets marked in purple and tapped with a purple tab. Coral is um, any prayers within the stories that I read that I personally want to pray myself. Anything that um, 
pops up like if a character tells another character to pray for something and it's something that I personally want to remember to pray for I mark it with coral I don't really mark it with a page flag I just mark it with coral and I probably would end up marking it with a purple page flag anyway so purple I guess and then the last color is brown brown is for like anything um, that I personally have a question on about the story or if there is something that's going on in the story that's really personal to like my personal life if I can connect with it on a personal level it gets underlined in brown um, and that's pretty much it that's my whole bag um, so yeah I am now ready to read this tomorrow um, it is now 1129 so I'm gonna end this part of the vlog I'm hoping to keep this vlog under an hour long um, just because I'm going to be like double speeding and triple speeding a lot of the parts in the video. But um, yeah, I'm excited to really read with you guys. Read with you guys, but you guys know what I mean. Read and um, have you guys see how I read and, you know, interact with my, my books. Because I love interacting with my books. So you guys are going to see me laugh. You guys are probably going to see me cry. Um, I, I don't know anything about this book besides what I just read to you guys. I'm super excited. I know that I love Tessa Afshar's writing. Her writing is absolutely phenomenal. Like superb writing and i love the research and the way she creates and cultivates her characters and her world so amazing so i'm excited for this i cannot wait i hope you guys join me for the length of this video because i don't know how long it's going to be i know this part of the video is like 12 minutes long so i apologize <laughs> but um yeah i'm going to end the vlog here and i'll see you guys tomorrow hey guys so right now it is 10 26 in the morning um 10 26 a.m. So I have done my devotionals. Let me make sure my phone is on by, but yeah. I have done my devo devotionals and I was finished at like 9 45, but I spent some time decorating my regular planner so that I can start planning out um, decorating the month and the weekly stuff. But um, I'm not going to plan until later because I want to get this reading done. I do, like I said, want to spend an hour. So it's 10. 26 i'm hoping to read five chapters by 11 o'clock but we'll see because i like to talk a lot so i have my pens and everything here and i'm sorry if the audio is a little off because i don't have my mic plugged in i probably should have plugged it in but the audio for these um for this blog will be off and on throughout the video because some clips i'll have the mic in some clips i'll just be using the actual mic from the phone so yeah I have my post-it notes ready, I have my tabs ready, I have my little color code key here, and I'm actually excited, excited, excited. So, as I said, we're going to be reading Harvest of Rubies by Tessa Afshar. This is about the prophet Nehemiah, his cousin Sarah, and her romance with Darius. Um, and, yes, so I'm going to do this as I would when I normally read, um, and just show you guys how I do it, so... I'll come back and, you know, talk every now and then. But um, as I open up the book, actually, do I have this book even prepped to read? I think I have it prepped, but whatever. So, opening it up. For my mother and father, thank you for teaching me to laugh and to love. I like that. So, there are scripture references to a few Psalms, Job, and Hosea. Um, apparently according to the copyright information um, and she uses the NIV and the NLT translation in this book so yeah this book came out in 2012 so on the inside you get a character list here you guys can see that and then you get um, a timeline, which I think is great. So I'm just going to quickly read through that. Okay, so basically this takes place around the time of Esther, if you will. Um, that's what I'm getting from this. It takes about around that time um, when Xerxes took the dynasty over his father after Darius the Great died. Um, so we have Sarah, who is the senior scribe to the queen. We have Leah. We have the prophet Nehemiah. Um, we have Xerxes. Uh, we have... Who else do I see in here? Those are like the only real people that I know from the actual Bible itself. So, um, cool. I like that they give me that because I can always go back if I forget a character. 
So I am starting off at chapter one. And I'm going to read for 71 pages, and we'll see. I'll probably come back in between every page, every chapter or so, and discuss with you guys. So, the eighth year of King Xerxes' reign, Persia. So, this is on my 12th birthday. My father discovered that I could read. Hmm. Okay, so I'm just going to read and come back when I'm done. Hey guys, so I'm back. I'm going to pause this. I am listening to one of the... Uh, ambiance music thingies that I have on my YouTube playlist right now. It's bedroom light rain at window. It's eight hours long and um, Put that on Mute for now. But yeah, so I am only on page 28. Um, it is now 122. It's basically been about an hour I'm only on page 28 because this book is getting really good like the quotes. Okay, so I don't know if you guys can see uh, how I've been tapping it up. So I am actually going to flip the camera around and show you guys how I've been doing it. And then tell you guys my thoughts so far on the book. Alright, so... Okay, so here's my desk. Um, messy, messy, messy. Yes, I know. That's the tripod I had you guys on. But here's the book. I'm put my phone to the side. I have another book over here that I'm using as like a... Um, I don't know, stand or whatever you want to call it. But let's open up. So um, let's flip to some of my favorite things. So here is one of my favorite scriptures. It says a simple word, soothe my rising anger. And I mark that as like a memorable quote because it reminds me that, you know, simple words, kind words, anything that's very much um, foundational and not over the top can really make you more calm i marked this in yellow because i thought this was funny it says um that i would rather hit my head with a pot and make myself lose consciousness than have to ha face the frustrating boredom of scrubbing its black bottom my one consolation was that our house was small and that was in regards to her um not really liking the whole domestic thing she's not a domestic person you see a lot of blue because her relationship with her father is just very, very sad. Here are some more memorable quotes. If the Lord has gifted the child, then perhaps it's because he has a plan for her life that requires such skills. And who are we to stand in the way of the Lord? Here's some more. We must be ready to follow the Lord wherever he leads us. We must walk through the small doors that the Lord opens for us in case they lead to a greater path. Um, this was some more stuff going on. I'm going to talk about that soon. Um, here's a scripture reference right here, Psalms 46 and 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Another quote, it's hard to see those we love suffer without questioning God. This was in, this was in re reference to him asking her um, if she still believed that God was um, present in, her tr in times of trouble, and she said no. Um, again, more sad stuff with her father. <laughs> Um, chapter 2 is when she learn, um, basically starts to get hired as the queen's scribe. Um, so here it says, the Lord has prepared you for this day. That kind of rem reminded me of Esther 4.14 when um, Mordecai spoke to Esther about maybe she was being born for such a time as that. Um, another great quote, there is no chance at work here, my dear. This is a door that the Lord holds open for you. Walk through it. He, he who has called shall also equip everything you lack shall be provided and you know scripture references this one here says your life shall serve a purpose you could not have conceived i put ephesians 320 um for the part that says he who has called shall also equip i put hebrews 13 21 second timothy 3 17 and first thessalonians 5 and 24 for everything you lack shall be provided i put second corinthians 9 8 matthew 6 33 and philippians 4 19 for this portion here where she says she could not proceed blindly for the sake of faith i put um second corinthians 5 and 7 and hebrews 11 and 1 which just talks about um faith um pretty much here's another quote that i liked you may fail let me get this to focus Okay, you may fail, I cannot deny it, but if you go through life making every decision based on what is safest, you will look back one day and discover that you have missed out on the best. Allowing fear to run your life will only rob you of your future. So good, and now I'm on page 28. So yeah, let me flip back around. Okay, so basically, um, 
Sarah has always been a determined little girl. Her mom died, I believe, when she was seven. And she's been living with her father, raised by her only aunt named Leah. Her father's name is Simeon. And um, so far, she does not have a really great relationship with her dad. And I can relate with that. Um, it's kind of like her father's there, but he's not present. Um, like, present and aware of her. And she feels like he doesn't love her, like he doesn't care, and that he just tolerates her. And it just, it just breaks my heart because um, I don't feel like my father tolerates, you know, me. But we don't have a really good relationship because he's been in my life. You know, he is in my life. But he wasn't physically present in my life the way I wanted him to be. So I could definitely relate with her on that level. But, I mean, the way her father was, it just was like... It was crazy because she never could remember her father defending her. He never hugged her, kissed her, said I love you or anything like that. So that was kind of sad for me. Um, you know, she really just feels unloved by her dad. And her dad does nothing to kind of rectify that problem. Um, she has always had a love for learning to read and write since the age of 12. And by the time she was 16, she knew how to write Persian. Um... Akkadian and Aramaic and also some other languages I'm trying to figure out what else is there to say um I will say that she worked so much because it allowed her to have a relationship with her father so in doing that she kind of lost sight of life and she also lost sight of God when her mother died because I guess she as a little girl she prayed to God to help her mother and you know how most of us when we pray to God for him to heal our loved ones we kind of resent him after he allows them to die but sometimes death is the best answer for our loved ones so um there came a point where um on page 20 and 21 where Nehemiah asked her if she could read a scroll, and it was written in Hebrew, and that's the language of her people. She's a Jew, and she didn't know the language. But um, Nehemiah was basically talking to her about Psalms 46 and 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And how when her mother was sick, she would um, recite the entire psalm, Psalm 46, to her mother. Um, I think she was about 7, she said? Yeah, at 7. But now that she's older, she just has lost sight of the Lord. He asked, he said, um, you believe them then, meaning the Psalms 46 verses. Do you believe them now? Do you believe that God is your very present help in trouble? And she said, no, my Lord. Um, so it's crazy. In her response, I'll even read further. It says, I believe in the Lord. It's only that these lavish promises have lost their meaning for me. Perhaps we were meant to help ourselves by our own efforts perhaps god is too busy to bother with our daily needs and i just think that's so sad like her mother died and i'm pretty sure as a little girl she prayed and prayed and prayed to god but then still lost her mother she has no relationship with her father um she has no friends no nothing so the only thing she really feels that she has is learning to read and write because that helps her build a relationship with her dad and she has such a big void in her heart that only God can fill that void, but she's not, like, going to God. Like, even when she begins to remember her emotions, she shies away from that. And she tries to, like, cut her ties with it. So, it's insane. Like, it's, 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 it's good so far. Like, it's really good. So, I'm going to chapter two. So, hopefully I can finish this by 12.30. Um, I'm going to give myself another hour. I'm going to continue reading. And what's taking me so long is that as I'm reading... I'm like writing in the margins and stuff and actually looking up scriptures that remind like scriptures that um, come to mind when I'm reading through the book. So yeah, I'm gonna keep reading. Hopefully I can read this by, by, by um, no later than 1230. I'm only on page 28. I need to get to 71. So I'm probably not going to read it all in this time. Um, because I, I, like I said, I want to read five chapters a day. So even if I can just get to chapter three, um, before 12, that'd be fine. And then I can finish the rest later and show you guys how I read later. So I'm going to get back to reading. Hey guys, so it's 12 22, as you can see. And I just finished reading five chapters of this book and oh my God. Oh my God. It's so, so good. Um, so I left off at chapter two and um basically in the rest of chapter two um she was on probation or like trial to being the uh queen scribe and she basically did good job she was hired on um 
before the month, but she basically had a month trial to be the queen scribe. And before the month was over, the queen offered her the position permanently, and she was only 20 years old. And she did that for about three years. Um, so at 23, she was still working as the queen scribe. So in chapter three, we meet a guy. Um, I'm going to assume that this guy will be Darius. I'm not 100% sure because they don't mention this person's name, but we know that he is of high standard or of high status or whatever because of the way she, um, you know, bows and stuff at him. And um, they have a little interaction. There's a mishap with a lion that went loose and all this craziness, which I thought was crazy. Um, and, you know, the guy seemed nice at first, but then he became really, like, disapproving of her. I don't know. Something transpired i'm gonna have to read that over because it was weird um with how it went down but yeah that's pretty much what happened in what chapter was that three yeah that's pretty much what happened in chapter three um and then oh there was a problem between the queen mother which was xerxes mother and the current queen which is queen damas damaspia i don't know but between the queen mother and the queen so um sarah felt like it was wrong but basically the queen mother was um trying to get one of the queen's men men um killed because she claimed that he stole so What's her name? Sarah didn't believe that that was the case. She felt like something was off with how the note, the letter was written and everything. So she asked the queen um, if she could look into it for like a week or two and the queen gave her three days. So on to chapter four. It is her now just going through um, the letter and trying to figure out and solve the puzzle. Um, and it was quite interesting. Like literally, really interesting. Um, when did she find out? Okay, so yeah, yeah. Chapter four is just her trying to figure out um, what was going on within those three days, um, and then in chapter five she finally found out what happened. And basically, um, I'm not gonna say who it was, but it wasn't the queen um, who lied. It was basically a setup to get the queen mother and the queen to basically go at it by someone. And I thought that was crazy. So that's pretty much what happened. Um, and the queen basically continue to give um sarah high accolades for you know solving the, the mystery and stuff like that so that was pretty much it for those 71 chapters 71 chapters 71 pages i have been enjoying it um oops did i rip my page no i didn't tabbing it up if you can see i'm really really enjoying it i want to know who that guy is because they really do not mention his name they just say he um, from chapter 3 so I'm really interested in knowing who the guy is I'm hoping it's Darius um, but so far I'm really liking it the Queen Demas Demaspia I don't even know if that's how you say it. I'm going to put her name on the screen but um, it's Demaspia I'm going to say the Queen Demaspia um, she's very nice she kind of reminds me of Esther but Esther was a lot more humble Queen Demaspia is, is a very humble person but she definitely has this kind of air about her that if you talk too much out of turn she will snap at you um a mistress i think that's how you pronounce it the queen mother who basically the queen mother is the king's mother um she's very much a snippy old woman like very snippy um and yeah that's pretty much it there were other characters involved but i i don't want to mention them they're not important but so far so good um so i'm probably not gonna do any more reading today i don't know we'll see if i do more reading today i'll come back to you guys and if not you will see me tomorrow morning guys um i just got back in the house it is 8 32 a.m hopefully you guys can see the time 8 32 a.m i'm listening to music right now because i have to dance this sunday and in first sunday i'm dancing and third sunday i'm dancing so i'm just listening to music um but yeah good morning um my morning went well i have been waking up at five 
about five o'clock ish, between five and five twelve, every morning, um, because my church is doing a twenty one day fast. We started yesterday, January second. So I wake up at five just so I can make sure to get me some coffee or mocha or something with a little bit of caffeine to get me going for the day. Um, because we are not allowed to basically eat till after 4 and then after 4 p.m. is really not a lot of like snacks and stuff. It's really only like soups and vegetables and fish, um, stuff like that. So, and like peanuts. So, yeah, I wake up and have my coffee. So I do my morning devotional kind of routine i showed you guys a video on how i did that you can click the on the screen for that but um yeah i just basically did my scripture writing and the scripture writing i'm doing for oh sorry for this month is just a 21 day fast for my church we have scriptures and things to pray for so i just um pick some of the scripture readings like if there's only one scripture a day then i write that one scripture up with like today there were like three different scriptures so i picked out the one that spoke best to me and i wrote that out and then for the devotional writing that I do in my recollections planner, I, um, what did I do? Oh, I wrote down one of the Holy Bible plans that I was doing with you ladies, which was the God and Goals, which finished today. So I'm only doing the soul detox right now. Um, whew, let me get comfortable. So on my agenda today, I need to upload a video. And I'm debating on what video to upload because I do have two of my testimony videos already done. Um, but then I also have my December book haul. So I might do the uh, one of my testimony videos today. Um, and then I'll do the book haul next week. And then next Thursday I'll upload the other part of my testimony video. Because I think I'm going to do two testimony videos a month just because it's, uh, it's a lot of testimonies to get through. Um, so I have to do that. I have to upload a video. I need to post the questions for the Ruth Anointing um, book club and answer them myself. I need to do my church's Sunday program because as you, I don't know if I've mentioned it before. I think I did, but I do work at my church um, in the administration department and I'm over uh, creating the, the church programs. So my sis, that's also part of the administrative department, she um, makes the programs on a regular like word document and then i create them into an actual program and then send them to the passive administration so i need to do that today um the 21 day fast i already did that so i need to check that off and then i need to catch up on the pinky promise journal challenge um i mentioned already that i was doing the uh i'm going to be doing a prayer challenge prayer journaling challenge i don't know if that's going to be in march or february or march i'm not sure yet but um i need to catch up on that just because i have not been using this as faithfully as i wanted to i've been slacking on my prayer life um as far as writing my prayers out so i need to get on that and then i have all of my books here so i have the ruth anointing which you ladies know we're reading as a group i have read it already um i read it a week before the bible uh, bible study i read it a week before the book club starts started so um, i just need to go back in and make sure i have my notes and stuff set for saturday's live discussion I have um, Running From Mercy by Anthony J. Carter, which I started last night. So, so good. Um, a lot of the things that he's saying, I already wrote because I completed the Jonah notes um, already. So, a lot of the stuff in here I already knew from when I studied Jonah to make the notes. But some of the stuff in here is like, ugh, so juicy and good. So, I'm enjoying this so far. I'm going to read another chapter of that. Um, and then Harvest of Rubies, we know we want to tackle five chapters of that. So, I want to do chapters six to ten which I'm going to do on camera. And then this is not Christian related, but I need to get back on to reading this book. Um, it's called The Ruin of Kings. It is a fantasy young adult novel. And um, I am on a blog tour for this book. It comes out in February. I think my blog tour is due. Yeah, so I have to finish this book by February 6th because that's when my review is due. Um, and I have another book too. I have so many reviews due and four reviews. One, two, three. Yeah, four reviews. Um, I have three of the books. The other one is not here yet, so I need to find out what's going on with that. But, um, yeah, I need to catch up on this. I'm only on chapter... What chapter is this? Seven, I think? No, I'm on chapter seven now. I'm only... Yeah, I'm only in chapter... I'm wrong again. Chapter eight. Um, yeah, I'm on chapter 8. There are 90 chapters in this book, so I need to get on to reading this. I'm trying to do about 10 or so chapters a day of this book, probably even like 15. The chapters are not all long. But, um, so yeah, so right now it is 8.37 a.m. I don't know if you guys can see that. 
Yeah, 8 37 a.m. So I'm going to quickly do my church's program. Then I'm going to get into some prayer journaling because I need to catch up on that. And then I'm going to read Harvest of Rubies, um, of course, five chapters. And then I'm going to dive into the Ruin of Kings. I'm also going to upload um, my video for the day as well as the questions for the Ruth anointing today as while I'm on the computer. So I'm going to tackle that. I'm going to hope to come back to you guys about 11-ish. Um, I should be done with the prayer journaling and all, all of that so that I can start reading and record that. So, yeah. I wanted to record a video today as well, so we'll see what gets done, because I do need to catch up on some um, videos that I need to post for the month, so yeah, we'll see.
guys, so right now it's 9-16, January 7th. Um, it is Monday, and I had a very interesting day. It was very long. I had to run um, an errand with my mother and my one of my brothers. So I've been busy with that, and I did catch up on doing my blog tour stuff. And I scheduled in the video for tomorrow to be uploaded. But um, I didn't get reading done. So the goal for today right now is to try to complete the book, Harvest of Rubies. I want to complete it. I'm literally like halfway through. You can see, um, on chapter 17, there's 27 chapters, so I feel like I can read the last 10 chapters with no problem for the night. And yes, this is my son, if you guys don't know. But, um, you want to say hi? Go ahead, hi. Say, hi. say hi out there. Hi. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm on chapter 17, and I'm loving it, so I really want to try to finish it tonight. I was going to not finish it tonight because I have BSF tomorrow. But I just checked the schedule, and then my class is actually at 11 a.m., so therefore I can do my lesson 14, stop it. I don't stop. Stop myself. No, but stop being silly, mommy's talking. <laughs> I can do my lesson 14 um, in the morning before BSF, so I can have it fresh in my mind, so I'm going to do that tomorrow morning. But um, yeah, I'm going to try to complete this book and probably catch up on the other two books that I need to read, but other three, sorry, because I'm reading... Four books right now at the same time. Two Christian fiction. I mean, a Christ, a biblical fiction, a Christian nonfiction. Um, mm -mm. both reviews, and then I have two mm -mm. other books that are paranormal and fantasy. Stop mm -mm. it. That are also review books. So, um, yeah, my son is gonna be going to sleep soon. So you're gonna see him in this video fidgeting around, but I'm going to speed it up because right now he's watching Puppy Pals. Um, so yeah. Bye. I do have my coffee. Alright, so my pens, oops, that played by accident, but I do have my pens here, my sticky tabs here, my coffee, and my cute little penguin, stop it, Sorry. thank you, my little cute penguin mug, um, it's French vanilla, French vanilla coffee with um, mocha peppermint creamer, it's a weird combination, but I'm going to drink it anyway, because um, I'm cold, and I'm going to sit here on my bed and read, and you're going to see me read, and yeah. So I'm going to speed up the camera. Sorry about my glasses right now. So yeah. Let's just uh, jump right into this reading vlog.
so it is 12:24 right now. Let me show you guys. Um, so it's the 8th of January. So 12:24. It has taken me seven days. Um, if you don't count the two days that I really didn't read much, um, it has taken me about five, four to five days to read this book. Um, 27 chapters. I'm just now coming back on the camera because I had to take the footage off to put onto my computer. So here's like all the clips that I need to put into the video plus this clip and the next one. Um, and I also posted my reviews onto Goodreads. Again, I have two Goodreads accounts. I have like my personal one which includes like all the books that I read which are Christian and non-Christian books. Um, and then I have like a strictly Christian Goodreads account so you guys can follow that if you choose to. I just posted those up, but this, I, I don't, I don't know if I would place this above in the field of grace. I don't know. It's really good. It's Pearl in the Sand, still number one. Still number one. This one might be number two, maybe three. I don't, it was so good. I cried. I tried to keep recording, but my camera, like, cut up. I think the last part was when I was, like, in the bed, smiling really hard because it was, like, the cutest romance scene ever. Darius was being, like, really sweet and kind, and they finally, you know, did the do, and the way it was written was so tasteful, and you understood what happened, but the way it was written was, like, so beautiful, and I'm tired right now. I got some ginger bell sitting over there waiting for me and three Twizzlers. I'm probably going to watch anime for like an hour till I fall asleep. Because when I get in the bed, I don't go to sleep. But I'm going to come back when I wake up in the morning before I study for about BSF and then um, discuss the book. Because I am mine. <laughs> like, when I say Tessa Afshar is literally one of my favorite authors, she is literally one of my favorite authors. Like, especially when it comes to biblical fiction. Oh. Stunning, and I mean, you guys can see the tabs, right? I t I'm gonna share with you guys some of my favorite quotes in the morning um, when I get up. I'm going to probably share one or two of like the cute little romance scenes because it's so good. I am like so ready to read the sequel, but I'm I don't know because I don't want to have my hopes up too high for the sequel. <laughs> There was a plot twist thrown in here, which I wasn't really expecting, but I loved it. I Five stars all the way. It's definitely a favorite for 2019 for me. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to actually shut my computer down. Shutting my computer down. I'm going to take my little one to the bathroom, and then I'm going to go on the bed and relax. I'm going to snap photos of this tomorrow, so you're probably not going to see photos of this until the 8th. Yeah, I'm saying tomorrow, even though today's the 8th, but tomorrow because I didn't go to sleep yet. So, uh, yeah, you'll see pictures of this <sighs> book review coming on the channel. I just... My heart. By the time you're watching this, I should have a review already up on my blog. So you guys can definitely check that out. Link down below. But, oh my god. For the first biblical fiction read of the year for me. The, just, Tessa is... I love Tessa. And I only have three more of her books to read. Which is the sequel to this, which is Harvest of Gold. Then I have her two New Testament books, which are um, Land of Silence, which is a story of the woman with the issue of blood. And then Bread of Angel, which is about Lydia, who was a seller of the color purple. I'm saying the color purple, but the seller of purple. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited. So excited, but I'm exhausted right now. So I'm going to go to sleep and try to get up at 5 so I can have some coffee before this fast begins because, yeah. But, oh, I do have another book haul coming. Um, I got some credit on Amazon. I get credit because I do, um, I'm an affiliate with Amazon. So if, like, if you use the links down below in the description when I post like book hauls and stuff, I do get like a small percentage. Literally, it's not a lot of money, but um, a lot of you guys do use the uh, codes. So I end up with credit monthly from them and I use that credit to purchase books um so yeah I know I just shared the two books from her from Tessa that I got well I got three 
other books from Connie Lynn Cassette because she's another author that I adore. Um, yeah, I've raved about her two books already. So yeah, and now I own all of Connie Lynn's books um, until the third book in her Cities of Refuge series comes out. There's two more, I think, a third and a fourth book coming out for that series, so I need to get those two. But hopefully I can get those um, through review programs, fingers crossed. But uh, my heart, you guys. My heart can't take the beautiful life lessons, the biblical sound wisdom. Just this book truly made me reflect on myself. Um, and not that I'm a workaholic because Sarah was definitely a workaholic. She used her work and her um, talents to define who she was. And I don't do that. I'm more so of the aspect of where she would uh, devalue herself and look at herself as worthless. I find myself doing that at times and um, trying to please those who are close to me, especially in my relationship um, with my fiance. I definitely put a lot of pressure on myself, which drives me up a wall. Um, and it's not it's not in a bad way. It's not to say that he's putting pressure on me because he's not. Um, but yeah, it just it made me realize a lot and that I need to go back to realigning myself with God um, because it's needed. And the moment Sarah realigned herself with God was a moment that everything was in order. Her marriage was, you know, gotten better. Um, Darius fell in love with her. Uh, her relationship with her father got better. It was just when you align yourself with God and the purpose that he has for your life it just it does something and the tear like I, I want to cry right now I'm trying to hold the tears because this book was so good which is why I don't know I think I would even yeah this might be right above um in the field of grace because this the pearl in the sand sorry Rahab tears all day every day like tears um, in the field of grace was really good, beautiful, beautifully written, but I got so much more wisdom and insight out of this book. I mean, I'm looking at the screen, even though I should be looking here, but I'm trying to make sure it's in frame, but <sighs> this book was everything. Like, literally, reading this book and being able to relate to this character was amazing, and I like books that I can relate to people. Um, and for those who might ask, this right here is my prayer wall. So I have, like, a lot of cards. You can't really see with the light, but... I have some of my prayers written on index cards and stuck here. I do have this space back here that I do want to stick um, some more prayers on. Hey guys, so it is 12.48pm on Tuesday, January 8th. And I have completed Harvest of Rubies yesterday. You saw a little clip previously to this one of me talking about the book. I finished it, um, and I loved it. I loved every inch of this book. This book was filled with romance. It was filled with corruption. It was filled with humor. Um, there were some really good, I would almost say almost prophetic words of insight in here that really just, like, made me realize who and what I am um, as a daughter of God. Like, it... <sighs> Everything about this book was beautiful. Um, I tabbed it up insanely just because it's amazing. There were, weren't a lot of pink tabs until the end because that's when the romance picked up. And um, some people may complain about the romance in the story, but I actually loved it. It was definitely a slow burn kind of romance um, because obviously, you know, Sarah did something stupid that made... Uh, Darius looked like a fool in front of everyone and she had to pay the consequences of her mistake and it wasn't like she purposely did it but she also did purposely do it because it wasn't okay so I don't know how to talk about it because I don't want to spoil what it is because that's like one of the main issues to their marriage but she did something retarded that she should not have done but she did it with half of the right heart and half of the wrong heart if that makes sense like you know when you want to do something and um you're doing it to help someone but then you're also doing it because you want to not do what you're supposed to do it was one of those situations and um you know that put a real big strife between the two of them and Darius had left her home for like three or four months by herself it was crazy um but yeah a lot of craziness ensued I mean the plot twist that was thrown at the end I was just like whoa wait a minute I did she can't it, it made me cry. Um, there was a cute scene with Caspian. Caspian is a little doggy. I think that's like Caspian. Yeah, Caspian. And oh, he died. I have to just say that. I mean, that might be a spoiler. But um, he died. And it was so sad. But it was also beautiful because he died protecting someone. And it was just like... 
oh god literally made me cry it was it was sad but like there i have so many green tabs in here so many yellow tabs just because sarah is a very unconventional jewess um she is a jew but she's grown up in the uh persian court obviously because she was a queen scribe but um she's very unconventional where she doesn't allow a man to rule over her and um she does have daddy issues obviously but her daddy issues were they were created out of a misunderstanding between her and her father um and i did love the beautiful ending with her and her dad that was like so beautiful because at the beginning of the story i literally i hated her father i'm not gonna lie i hated her father because he was just a real douchebag towards her like he showed no affection but towards the end the prophet nehemiah explained things to her and it was just like oh my god he does love her and then he like came oh it was so cute but um okay so sarah like i said she's very unconventional she's very humorous um I mean, when she was put in a life or death situation, she literally cracked jokes. And I was just like, yo, this girl is funny. Like, everything she said was funny to me. Like, she was just one of those people that, you know, it's funny. And she's also one of those people who causes problems without purposely trying to cause a problem. Like, she tries to help, but she only makes things worse for herself or those around her. There was a cute little scene when she was teaching um Queen Demosphia's, uh nephew how to say buttress. But he kept saying butt rest. Um, and it was just so funny to me because you know kids are cute and they they're like just very impressionable and stuff impressionable and stuff so it was really cute but um yeah the romance oh that romance was gorgeous um it was a gorgeous gorgeous romance i don't even know like i i love the way darius grew to love his wife um now he hasn't yet proclaimed his love like said i love you to her so i'm hoping in the sequel he does because um we need you to say i love you darius but um, his actions towards her, the softening of his heart towards her, it was just so beautiful. And there's a few things in here that I personally like want to pray. Um, there was a prayer that she prayed. I'll actually read it. It was on page 270 if you guys have the book. But um, she said, Lord, you don't see things the way we mortals see them. We judge them by outward things, but you look at the heart. So much of my life I have chased after outward concerns. I have wanted to excel, but you, O oh Lord, know my heart. Please forgive me for serving the false matters of my soul. Help me to please only you. Help me to want to please only you. And I, I, I mark that as something that I personally want to pray. Just because sometimes I can get caught up in other things, um, things of the world, and not so much of God. And I find that I put him on the back burner. So that's something that definitely I can pray to kind of remind myself. And there was something else she prayed for her husband. And, um... She said, part his heart for me, Lord, part his soul for yourself. And I just think that's something beautiful to pray for your spouse or your significant other. Um, that's just a beautiful prayer to make sure that you're both aligned with the Lord, but also that you both have hearts for each other. I think that's beautiful. Um, I mean, I can go on and on and on. There are so many things, like, in this book. So many things. Like, the prophet Nehemiah was spitting some knowledge. Like, when I say knowledge, I mean knowledge and one thing that got me is she said i now realized um i could never have tasted true happiness while i had remained so sick my suffering had had paved the way to my feeling i'm sorry to my healing i'll read that again she said my suffering had paved the way to my healing and i think that's so profound and um for me it definitely kind of relates to what's going on in my life um my life in general but like the things that's been going on immediately with my my grandmother and stuff um you know there's a lot with that going on and i'm i'm learning not just for me but for my mother as well through this process um it hurts but that process leads to healing and it also leads to blessings i mean sometimes you have to lose something to gain something um and i'm not saying that's how the lord always works but you know the lord works in mysterious ways you know sometimes he'll take something that you really love or something that's been um, a blockage for you and remove it. But his removal is not always an easy thing. It's always, um, you know, sometimes it can be a hard thing. So, yeah, um, I just, I I, I love this. Um, the prophet Nehemiah literally was spitting some amazing knowledge. I love the scripture references in here. Some of them didn't even, like, require scripture. Like, some of them were not actual scriptures written. But I could, like, read the words that the character was saying. And literally, a scripture came to mind. And it was, like, insane. Um you know i loved it it had a mix of everything it was literally one of those well-rounded stories um the ending was beautiful there is definitely um 
you know, I still need to read the author note because I like to read author notes, especially when it comes to biblical fiction, because I like to know where they got the information from. And a lot of the times they explain how they got how they did the research and what they, their, their thought process was when writing. So I'm definitely going to read the author's note. Like I said previously, there are recipes in the back. I think there are three, one, two, three, four, five. There are five recipes, actually. So that's like a whole meal. Um, and then there's acknowledgments, which I'm probably not going to read, but there is a um, sneak peek in the back of the book, the sequel. And before she called it Harvest of Gold, she apparently called it Walls of Gold. That was like the, the previous title before she called it Harvest of Gold. Um, so actually, let me see if these line up. I'm sorry, I'm just making sure like to see if uh, they match. No, this is just a sneak peek, so it doesn't even say exactly like which chapter of the book this is. But it's just a sneak peek. I don't even know what chapter it comes from. Yeah, I don't know. But it's literally just a sneak peek of the sequel, which I'm not going to read since I actually have the sequel here with me. But, um... There's a new character, apparently. Named Nasir. <laughs> But yes, um, I loved it. It was great. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, this video was kind of sort of a fail because um, a lot was going on. So I'm going to try to redo this when I read another book. Probably not. Um, well, maybe I will do another video like this with um, Harvest of Gold because I'm excited. But I'm having a dilemma. So I want to read this immediately, like right now, today. But um, I have other things that I need to read, like that long 90 chapter book that I have to review. Um, and then I have all of these books that I need to read and review before February. Um, so yeah, I have actually a review that's due on the 12th, which is in like a few days, and I have not gotten far in that book. So there's a lot of things, like a lot of these books that I have to read, and these are not like Christian books. These are my regular non-Christian books that are paranormal and deal with like paranormal creatures and romance and stuff so i definitely need to read these but i really really want to dive into this like really badly so i don't know i'm probably going to get through my review books first um and then go back into reading because i definitely want to pick up where we left off with them because um first of all darius is looking real cute and i love i don't know if you guys can see his eyes oh just gorgeous Darius. in my mind darius is this like hunk in my mind but again i know how they like were back in the day like i don't know just as i was reading him i was like picturing him in my mind personally but you know whatever but <laughs> um i did enjoy reading this book i hope you guys enjoyed this video again if you want to see more videos like this let me know i definitely can do them because i kind of do enjoy vlogging um and doing like a reading vlog is kind of fun for me um definitely not how i planned it to go but with it being the first one, I'm okay with it. So I'm going to end it here. So I started this on the first. I didn't really read it, though, the whole, like, eight days through. Maybe, like, five or four days through I've read. But, um, yeah, I enjoyed it. And I will see you guys in the next vlog. Bye. Mm -hmm.